Zoom public session. Um, we had already approved the um, the agenda prior to the executive session, but um, we will need a motion to amend the agenda and recognize uh, Greg's resignation as town manager. So if I can get a motion and a second so we can put that officially on the so moved. Where are you putting it? We are putting it in right now. So it will go in before the public comment or inquiry. So we can Need to speak in public session about it, but um, uh, Greg um, has put in his letter of resignation uh, as town manager, and he will be departing um, in around the 21st of June um, to go back to Colorado. Um, I don't really want to get into too much of it because that's his, you know, personal uh, business. But um, he's more than willing to. Collaborate if he wants to. If not, we can leave the way it is, and we will move forward. Um, we will have, while we are amending the agenda, um, we will keep our executive session at the end. Um, we will be inviting Teresa into that executive session. <coughs> currently on the agenda for tonight that anybody would like to comment on or bring to our attention, more than willing. Just make sure because there are a few that we don't know your name, so just make sure you raise your hand, state your name for the record, and, <coughs> and move forward. <laughs> you can go first. Okay, thanks. I'll help you real quick, but I just wanted to be reassured that you are going to hire an interim town manager. Correct, yep. Um, so the idea, well, we will be going in an executive session to talk about that. Um, if we decide to move forward with that this evening, then we will come back into public session and make that uh, decision. So the idea, the idea is to appoint an interim temp, right. and then and then start to chart our path on going through the process of hiring a new town manager. Why? Why interim town manager or yeah, why why town manager? Why hire a new town manager? Yeah. Royal doesn't have one, Starbucks doesn't have one, they have an interim. Yeah. There, that's always uh, it's always an option. Um, things flow a little bit differently in those towns. Um, even though they don't have a town manager, um, they do have a town administrator. Um, the, the roles are slightly different, um, usually in a, so the two differences, you know, in, in a town, well, when you have a town manager, the town manager it, um, is appointed by the select board to run the town. Um, in a town administrator role, the select board runs the town, and the town administrator kind of helps with the day-to-day -day duties. So it's, it's a little bit of a different thing. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different process, so the, the board on a town administrator uh, type town plays a larger role on the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, day-to-day -day process. Uh, but it's definitely something that we have talked about already um, and uh, that we will continue to talk about um, through the process, so. Go ahead, Penny. Um. In relation to that, will you have a hiring committee? Well, um, so in our next executive session, that will be obviously 
some of the questions that we'll be trying to answer ourselves. Um, last time, we decided as a committee that we're here, Mo and myself, Paul, I think, is here. When Lee, were you not here yet? Um, last time, anyways, the way we went about it was um, we formed a committee which was made up of the select board members as well as um, some, some of the public, um, which I believe we ended up having three public members that ended up being committed to it. Um, and it worked out really well last time. Um, but I, at this point, I wouldn't be able to comment directly on how that would be, but that will definitely be an option. And, it, and if we do decide to do that, then we'll definitely uh, make that uh, information public so that anybody that would like to be on that committee could, could volunteer or serve. Anything else that's not on the agenda? Yes? And just make sure that we, you know, we know a lot of you, but just make sure you state your name for the record so Lisa can make sure that you're in there and Paul can make sure that um, we have grabbed you when we do the uh, meeting notes. Okay, my name is Betty Ann Scammell. I was here at the last select board meeting. I was wondering if you would have an update on Cherry Hill Cemetery. Okay. And I know that you said you were all going to go and look at the water mm -hmm. issues there. Yep. And I didn't know if you had the opportunity to do so. And what your thoughts are at this point. So I have. Yep. Okay. I have. And so has Alan. And uh, the, the plan was, I think I'm in the right area. Mo and I have talked about this a little bit. But the idea was it looks as though that culvert that's, that's kind of uphill of that is too small. So there's a couple options that we looked at. Either extending that culvert all the way across and covering that entire, that little ditch there. Mm -hmm. Or, because I know access was something that, that Mo had said that, that that's a tough thing for people to get into the yeah, cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, another thought was to extend that culvert another 10 feet, 12 feet, a little further down, and then put a, a stone walkway type of thing to allow people to, so the culvert's still there, but you can walk over sort of a, a footbridge kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the two options that we're more working on right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think both of them will work. It, it will fix the problem. As well as at the end, we're going to put more of a defined ditch to try to keep that water because it, it looks like it turns the corner and it's supposed to go to kind of a wetland area, but it doesn't. It, it continues kind of around. So we will define that ditch a little bit better. It, it's, don't we want to get rid of the ditch necessarily, but we want to define it so that it, it well, if takes, call it, then it. takes the water where it needs to go. Right. And what about the culverts that go out across Kurtz Road that pour onto the other cemetery lots? Um, those I did not see. Where are those at exactly? Are they further up the hill or is it further? No, there's a They're road. They're right on the flat. There's a road that runs up to Kirk Boyd's house. It's right, right on across the, the bottom edge of, the of those. That's the one I looked at. There's three culverts on that road, on that flat yeah. road. Right, and two of them, they kind of come down together and open. No, the those are the first two. That's, okay. that's the first, but there's three others after that. Further up? No, well, flat, across, Okay. Uh -uh. Okay, I'll take a look at those. Yeah, there's three. Um, there's are two. they, so, you, so the issue is, is where they dump out, they dump out right next to Yeah, they dump right out on grave sites. Okay, let me go and take a And you'll have to knock some bushes on two to find them, and the other one's got to clear cut for that. Okay. Um, and there are a couple of, uh, I read over the minutes. There's a couple of adjustments on the minutes uh, regarding last week's when I was here. A couple of Okay, minutes. then I think we'll be doing that pretty quick. Let me get that. Thank you. So I, I think that to sum it up right now that we've identified uh, the comments from last time and uh, I, I can't speak for all the board members but I think a majority of the board members have gone out and looked at it as well as uh, the very important people which was Greg and Alan um, and have determined that there obviously is, there are issues there um, and I think at this point right now we're just trying to figure out what the, the best solution um, within reason for there and it's kind of complex because there's there's complex, you know, there's there's the, the culverts, uh, uh, Kurtz Road, as well as the ditch line areas. And I, I don't know if there's a perfect fix there, but I think there, that we can do better than what is currently. Yeah, we're, we're trying to just somehow accommodate the water flow as well as the access. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I, and it's cost effective as possible. But if that means a full culvert, maybe that means a full culvert. So, uh, so I don't think we're ready to make a full recommendation of what we're going to do there yet, um, but 
um, I would say, why don't you follow back up with either myself directly or the board um, before our next meeting? Um, and we can give you a little bit more on that. Maybe we'll have more about what our plan is and maybe a date to do it um, type, type idea. Um, our next meeting is on the 24th, correct? So why don't you follow up with either myself directly or, or feel free to come back in on the 24th and I think, um, can we make that talk Yeah, I'll talk about it and find out what his, what the, you know, what his plan what, looks like. What we think the timeline for that. See, you know, or even if it's a partial fix for now to get right. the ball moving and when we might be able to tackle that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll get with Alan and get you more of a definitive time. Okay. So, uh, and, and I would just also just, you know, if any of the board members have any ideas in regards to the Cherry Hill Cemetery, feel free to get with Greg and yeah. Alan um, to go through that. So, any, anybody else have any comments? Any? Um. I'd like to ask a couple of questions about the back roads. And wondering, is there a yearly schedule for cleaning the ditches, <coughs> cleaning out the culvert, getting out the debris that's in them, or I mean, who's in charge of that, and how is that done? There wasn't for a long time. There is now. There is now. So Alan and the Public Works Department, they have a schedule of you know, a lot of it's driven by people, you know, complaints, I'll tell you. But there is still a, a charge of seasonally getting out and doing cutting ditches and cleaning the ditches and cleaning the culverts, draining uh, mm -hmm. the roads. It all just kind of happens on a, on a rotation. Now, I would tell you that rotation is not a, a perfect animal uh, because some of these roads get worse than the others a lot more quickly than the others do. Uh, but there is a, a rotation that they try to keep. We have. Um, this year it's kind of been tough because of the rain. If we start to grade the rain, it turns into mud and it just gets nasty. But um, there is a there is a rotation that they try to keep. Um, you know, it's one part of town and hit the next part of the next part and just kind of keep that going. Uh, as far as you know, the ditches or or the culverts, uh, I'm not sure. Jason, is that on a kind of as you see them, or do we have a we don't have like a, a rotation of let's hit every single culvert in in this area. Right. Right. And a lot of it is, is, you know, people giving us calls too, because you guys are all the eyes and ears of, of these back roads for us. So when we have somebody who calls about it, we definitely go out and take a look. Um, but it is something that, that myself and Alan and, and the department have been trying to get going is a more defined schedule. Uh, the problem with having a schedule is that that schedule can change at a moment's notice. So that's why we haven't been real uh, apt to post it out on the website somewhere because I don't want to tell you I'll be there tomorrow whenever it may rain or something might happen and I can't get out there because then it looks like we're not doing our jobs. Uh, but there is a schedule and they're, they're trying to keep to it the best that they can. Because the 30 years that I've lived where I have, <clears throat> I have never seen the culvert cleaned out. Ever. Yeah, that's right. And now we have culverts since the last storm, one being up by Joanne Wood that has been plugged since the storm, is still plugged. So when it rains, it washes up over it, washes across the road. That same culvert is still plugged. I can, I can tell you a lot of them. So I don't see the maintenance happening. I don't uh, see we it. We have 300 bullets and four guys. <clears throat> I mean, it's more nice. Say it was Canada Road. Most of that damage, the water went across the road because there was no ditches. Yeah. And I watched the water go, come off, go right across the road, wash it out. And the only time a ditch was dug since I've been up there for 17 years is when Bobby Hyde went off the road with his dump truck, just past my driveway. We had a ditch for a, a year, about 20 feet long. So I would say, Penny, um, you know, you bring forward a very valid um, point with cleaning out the ditches and whatnot. And I know from my experience with traveling around the state of Vermont and every town and every state road in Vermont that I work on, 
that is, it is the same common theme in every town, and unfortunately in just about every state road, that the culverts don't get cleaned out and the ditches don't get maintained like they should. Um, but I, I, I think it's a good valid point to bring up. I know we're going to be working on, you know, we got pushed back a little bit because of the whole flood thing. Like right now we were going to be talking about some winter maintenance schedules uh, for this coming year. Um, but maybe as a board it might be helpful while we talk about winter maintenance. We can talk about, you know, summer or spring, summer, fall maintenance. We could add to that. I guess it doesn't hurt. Uh, you know, these are the, you know, things that we want to hit during the summer maintenance if that's, you know, So can I ask where, where the town crew is working right now? What are they working on? Get it off the day ready goes. Um, you're working on equipment that's broken today. Uh, in my understanding, what else? What's going on the rest of the day? You remember all the elements on this one? Was that ready for all possible? Yeah, these mag chloride windows they were out today. Mag chloride some windows. I don't know where he was at. He's told me they were out. They're clearing branches. We're laying branches. They've got the, uh, the chipper up and running. Clearing out the branches that are hanging down, getting cars. They've been doing that. Um, yeah, they're going to be striping the roads next week. The crosswalks will be done next week, and maybe the bull outs next week. Um, so that's that's kind of what the rotation looks like. You know, in the meantime, we have one guy on radar that's out. Eventually. Yeah. Well, hey, you're you're afraid. Afraid. Yeah. You're but yeah. You know, That was a, like That's a, not to me a priority. Yeah, you're striking the road, you're standing next to where a bump out goes. It makes sense to put a bump out there. How many of them got run over in the flower patch in the middle of the road? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bump outs. We can, do we they, can what address, do they really do? I'll be more than happy to address. Well, let's finish yeah, Penny's sorry. address. No, no, okay. you're, you can address the bump outs if, if you'd like. Um, okay, so I mean, I think the my, short Today, answer. the river road got what I call scrape. I don't call it grading. When the road is graded, it is rolled and graded. Within a week's time, the same bumps will be there, the same holes will be there. It needs to be rolled and actually graded, not scraped. Right. A tree was cut beside the road, and every piece of that tree is in the ditch. Why wasn't it? The chipper is being worked on <clears throat> right now. It What's wrong with manpower it. and picking it up and moving it? We're, we're not allowed to take the trees out of the property. Yes, it is. We have to leave those so for so long. And then they're big enough chunks, we'll just go over with the back hole and put them on the other side, over the bank. Yeah, it's standard yeah. one, but the trees that are on the property that are cut down belong to the property owners. We haven't given them the first right to take that tree. Are they notified? I don't know how to notify them. There's a tree down on your property. I mean, so how many trees are down for the, if we get a heavy rain tonight, that ditch is plugged, and what's going to happen? <laughs> the same thing that's happening. And, yeah, and, and I normal. Penny, I understand. <clears throat> I understand it completely. I'm just, but, I'm just, I'm just going to let you know that mm -hmm. the town of Bethel is not the only town in the state I, of Vermont I know, that are facing this issue. I live in Bethel. I know. I understand that. And, and the damage is done. It costs right. us more money. I understand that. We, we are, Penny. Common sense. We are trying, there's a lot of common sense, and I understand that. We're trying to balance a combination of everyone's needs as well as a, a budget that everybody can live with in the town of Bethel. And it's a very delicate process of, you know, there are things that have been um, put by the wayside for many years in this town that we're still trying to dig out from. And, and I would like to think that there are individuals seeing that there is a lot of forward movement in the town. However, there's a lot of things that we still haven't even gotten to. You know, and, and when it gets to culverts and ditches and things like that, those are some of the things we haven't gotten to yet. Um, and then we have to make a decision as a town. You know, if, if we believe that some of these items are, are important <coughs> enough to us, then we're going to have to add more money, to, you know, more money to the budget, which requires taxes going up. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people in this town that, you know, the tax rate is an issue. So, you know, we're just trying to balance that, you know, they'll, they'll get it if you can. Um, 
but it is heard, and we will work forward towards a solution with that. Um, and we, I think it would be good for the board if we add that discussion to the winter maintenance discussions that we're going to have on seeing what maybe going forward a, a summer um, schedule of maintenance would look like. So, um, and we plan on you know inviting in um, Jason and you know his peers to ha to be a part of that discussion while we you know make those type of plans. So, but it, it's well heard. I I have the same comments since I've lived here on ditches and you know mm -hmm. and things like that as well. So, well, material is a big thing. I mean, as far as road building, I've known that you got millions and millions and millions of yards up in the quarries. Why don't we utilize that? You have to talk to the um, budding landowners that put a kibosh to noise ordinances of trucks going in on there. In Act 250. I mean, that's, those are all the things yeah. that you handicap. I mean, that's with. called educated idiots right there. We have a great <laughs> resource there, but if you can't it's a move a truck in out of there because the budding landowners have complained. Why not run them down the interstate like we were doing during Irene? You can't do that. Now you're talking about you'd have to get a you'd have to get a declaration of emergency to do that. So yeah. I don't it, it's sad. It, it, it really is. The challenges sad. the challenge that we face. My dad built the road from uh, down to items and you still don't have to touch that to this day. It's rock hard. Yeah. He used all the stuff out of the out yeah. of the and, that, and that's why you will never take anything out of the, the Bethel quarry anymore unless it's an emergency situation because because they have limited it, when I say they, <coughs> the abutting property owners, as well as you know, through the permitting process, have limited that quarry so much that all they can take out of that is granite slabs, so many trips per week. So our options of going in there and taking advantage of that resource is not there until, either, until those landowners change their um, point of view of that quarry and allow for permitting changes there. So who made the decision to have so many trucks come through? That, that's, all, that's all the wonders of Act 250 and, and local DRB. Now I can't <coughs> say that's our local DRB, but I can tell you that Act 250, when any organization goes through a permitting process, um, they have a hearing. You know, just like anything else. And during that hearing is when abutting property owners are allowed to discuss their you know, needs and wants. And during that time, you know, that that's what happened. So you know? they expected to shut down the quarry? Well, they they handicapped the quarry. Oh, so I mean you drive up the interstate and you'll see, you know, you'll see there's, there's probably million there's million probably a million million, million tons million. of material sitting in two big piles up there that will never go anywhere. <clears throat> It's just going to sit there. It's it's it's, it's overburdened that they don't use. So and it's the best yeah. stuff. Yeah. Can, well, you can't even buy it. It's that good. And it's not that the it's not that the quarry wouldn't love to sell it to the town at a discount or whatever. Yeah. It's that you couldn't truck it out of there. And and the noise ordinances that are put in place. So it's it, it's very challenging. But that's the that's the um, world we live in in Vermont and all the permits and regulations. So. I had to. We'd love to use it, I'm sure. It cut down on our costs a lot, right? Yeah, and, uh, and then, uh, put good material on yeah, it. Yeah, good results. So. Now, um, just uh, our meeting's long enough, but we did hear the bump out concern. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it, just, it's just an opportunity to address it publicly. So, so um, I don't know what it was. It, three years ago that we did the um, the downtown, the better block. So. The original better block that started, remember when we had, you know, the downtown where we um, had um, a bike lane and we had the outside vendors and um, so the better block plan, um, you know, was basically to, you know, how can we revive the downtown um, and the better block was kind of, you know, step one of that, which they come in with different ideas on how, how, how we can get business thriving in the downtown. Um, how can we make it easier for people to do business or easier for people to come in and uh, visit the shops? Um, and out of that, um, the Better Block came, um, came a lot of different ideas and suggestions from not just the townspeople, but from outside sources through the agency and, and um, the outfit that came from Texas there, uh, That's better, better Block yeah. themselves. Um, so
so they had ideas and suggestions on how we could move forward on on some of these plans. And and one of them that came out of that um, was was noise in the downtown village. Uh, so they you know they did some studies in regards to the decibel level of you know what a calming downtown should sound like, and then what our downtown sounded like. So um, it was found that the decibel levels in the downtown were you know a lot higher than they should be. It's a lot louder than two trucks trying to so, hit years. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so the idea was um, through through uh, BRI uh, they moved forward <coughs> through the better block and got a grant to test the waters on what some of these bull belts would be, put them in place, get some information from the public on do they work, do they not, just it's an idea going forward. So they had put them out there and we definitely have the, the initial, Mo, you were on it, you and me, Paul might have been coming on about that time, I don't, don't want to drag him into it, but um, it's all Paul's idea. So. <laughs> uh, so the idea was to give it a season or two and, and test the water for it. So the, we had a grant that bought them. Um, at this point, we're, you know, our, we're on the hook to install them and take them out once a year. And, and the idea at that point was to give it a season or two and get feedback from the public. So last year was the first full year that we had them in. We definitely received everybody's comments on <laughs> It, you know, I would say that they were weighted a little heavier on the negative end of things than they were on the positive end. Um, and then the goal for this year is, is to put them in. We're going to slightly um, tweak the, um, the set that was by the hardware store um, and put them in a better location because the one by the hardware store was the one that got cleaned off a lot. Uh, it just seems like a waste of time. Yeah, I know. It, but it, it, you These know, in order to do that when there's so much other stuff there. So it's an idea of in order to in order to be positive and move in a positive direction in the downtown, we're exploring some of these ideas. So we plan on putting them in. We're gonna change slightly the location for this year and um, continue to get the feedback and then probably by the end of this year we'll make a decision if we want to move forward with them or not move forward with them. So they, they were they were yeah, the, the grant doesn't come up for us to take them and put them out. No. No. No, they they, they the grant purchased them. And we're but it it roughly I mean no not it, to, the cost associated with putting them in and taking them out is very, very limited. It took them two hours. It, it's two, two hours. Guys, half a day. So that was the first time they installed them. But we took them out, you know. It's, and, and the idea is to be able to put those in at the same time. We're painting the crosswalks because we're going to be painting them anyway. So, you know, the idea is to spend a day. So, is it for noise? The, the traffic. The, so there are the ideas that traffic will slow down. Traffic to yeah. lower the noise and also make it safer for pedestrians. It allows a pedestrian to set. A full, a full car width, so they only take up what a car would be parked there, but you are able to step into a more visible space in the street. So when there's cars parked on both sides, it allows a pedestrian to step into the same zone that a car would be in and be more visible so that a, an oncoming car could see them and actually stop and make it safer for pedestrians crossing the street. So it's not just about noise level, it's actually intentionally to slow down traffic and make it safer as a pedestrian zone, which is what makes it downtown viable as... Every time I've been to Bethel, there's a car park there. I mean, yeah. it don't matter what time of day, there's a car park there, and I'm pretty sure it does about the same thing. I mean, not like... You well, but a, a kid is not taller than a car, right? An adult is much more visible if a car is... But usually the car is pulled right up to the bump out. So, I mean, it, it doesn't give you... <laughs> Three to four feet. <coughs> but, sure. I mean, we could, we could argue. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I just again, yeah, again, it's the their, their ideas. Um, yeah. You know, it was put through through a grant. So, um, had we had not used that grant, we couldn't have used that money for anything else. So that that grant was just to purchase bulbs, just to do that only. So it's not like we could have not taken that grant and bought two more culverts. That right. would have never happened. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, for that purpose only. <coughs> um, would have covered them after. Yeah. You know, like to put them in and out for two years, great. Right? And then there's no get off us, but so and then and then just let everybody know. Because you use loader probably to bring down 
We're going to use the loader. And just to let everybody know, if you're driving on the bull belts, okay, you're driving on the wrong part of the road. The width of the road, the width of your travel lane does not change for when the bull belts are in or the bull belts are out. If you're driving over the bull belts, you're, you're driving through parking spots or potentially hitting pedestrians. But a lot of people That's park the they point park. of it. When they get in that car, they don't see, they forgot they parked in front of them. They don't see, they don't want to have them. Well, there's, there's drivers like that everywhere, you know. What about Read about them in the paper when they run over the kids. What about the so. sign, up, sign up that says crosswalk? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that we're trying. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, you know. Yep. Yeah, so, just with the, you know. So not to beat the dead horse, but the idea is to put them back in this year. We're going to slightly rearrange the ones that were at the hardware store and put them in a, a little bit better position and continue to collect data. And then at the end of the year, we will meet with the board and decide what we want to do going forward. Yeah. Really another year? Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. <clears throat> Anything else other than bull belts or culverts <laughs> or ditches? Or ditches. Um, Greg, I want to thank you for meeting with me at our property a week or so ago, and I just want to do a follow-up and make sure that what you were, you know you told me would happen is related. Yeah, that's a long time. Okay. He said no problem. Okay. So. Is that anything we could get? I'm worried with you leaving that mm -hmm. that may get slipped through the cracks. I can write something. Could you. you write something sure. in writing? Sure. Thank you. Okay. All right. <clears throat> anything else? Anybody else have anything else? Not on the agenda. <coughs> All right. Seeing none, we'll move on. So Dylan has been waiting patiently. We didn't get into the bull belt conversation right, 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 that we've been addressing right, right, earlier. Right, right. <laughs> So, um, so our first point was Dylan. Uh, yeah, we. When was it when we talked last? November. Uh, this is the last quarter. So yeah, three months. Yeah, November, December. Yeah. Right about yeah. before the first year, right? Yeah. So, uh, so if everybody remembers right, Dylan had uh, purchased a piece of property up here. Um, at that point. Um, you know, he was just starting the renovation phases or demo phases, I think, at that point. Um, and uh, as uh, Board of Water at that point put our hats on for that, and um, we had given him a, a six month, right? Did six month. Yeah, a six month um, come back, reprieve on his, his water and sewer while he's doing. Um, Restoring that building to bring it up to being able to rent it out and be profitable. So uh, we did discuss with him if it was going to run over six months that he would come back in with a new proposal uh, in timeline on you know uh, to get things done. Uh, so I'll turn it over to you. We're we're getting there, you know, time and money, but uh, the bottom one is just about done. Uh, we still don't have the toilets or sinks in yet, but they're real close. I think all the stuff's there. And uh, the top one's the same thing, you know, trying to do them both. It's out of pocket, so it's taking a little longer than expected. But probably need another another quarter, I think we would be we'd be right there to to being done. So at this point, from what I'm hearing is you're looking looking to get one more quarter worth of Well, we just got I just got my Bill for the last quarter, so it would be this quarter. I was thinking if I could have that one debated until you know one more time. I think I think we. So where are we? At? I'll put you on the spot, Therese, But where are we at with his account? Um, so yeah, he said he just got a full season bill. Did we bill you to the vacancy, or I can't remember. No, what I just full. The full on. Yeah. yeah. So he's just looking for you to bait this last quarter, and then he'll be done. So he would bait them before, um, yeah, no, giving them no. six months to. So this last quarter of water and sewer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, water, there's, a, there's no, yeah, no right. water and sewer. Yeah, because the bill they just got was April, May. Okay. So if, if we did, um, chose to go that direction with the abatement, then, then you feel like you'd be in a good position after that to yeah, I mean, we're, we're really of, close now. I mean, it's up to the structure and start right yeah, now. It's just, you know, he, he gums when he can, and I, you know, when I have the money. It's 
that, you know, trying to, trying to do everything out of pocket, as I said, adds up quick. <laughs> and, and I know it's challenging in, in, in our spot anyways, it's just more of a, like we're more than willing to work with anybody on, you know, restoring our downtown okay. and, you know, building and getting them to, you know, where we can rent them out and, you know, uh, have a positive influence on the downtown. Um, but also just got to juggle that with, you know, the schedule of when it will be done, you know. Because, um, yeah, yeah. Not to say that you're going on that trip, but, you know, we, we don't want to be here two years from now talking about the same thing. You know? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, we, be here I think the board, <laughs> I think the board just needs some reassurance that this is what you're looking at. Um, yeah. I mean, if, one more quarter, I mean, we would be, you know, right there with, with everything. I'm pretty sure. Like the bottom, as I said, the bottoms, we're just putting fixtures and stuff in now. And the top, you know, we're not you know, doing that one. We didn't have to do any sheetrock or anything. It didn't get smoked in, so. You know, we, we're just gonna paint it, put the you know some new toilets and stuff in, and then we should be up and running. So. Does anybody have any comments? From the are, we, are we doing abatement? Or are we doing vacancy break? Mm -hmm. We're doing an abatement currently with. So as in zero. Zero. Yep. So if there's the ash for water, have the water turn on. Mm -hmm. Right. Water is zero right now. The, the, Shut this off. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, once you want the water on, then you'll be you'll be spraying charged for use from that point on. Yeah. 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 yeah, which is, I mean, should be how it is. If you're not using the water, or you know, you're not using the sewer. So I mean, and and just to clarify things. I mean, typically we have. I guess when we're dealing with a vacant building, for instance, um, there, well, there's three ways you can do it. There's, you know, you pay for water and sewer regardless of it's vacant or not. Then the other, the other piece that you know can happen in certain instances if it meets policy is, you know, you can take a uh, vacancy rate on a building. So let's say, let's say your building, your, let's say you did all your remodeling to your building, right? And I don't know. A year later, you have nobody living in it, and and you ask for a vacancy rate. So the vacancy rate, the vacancy rate really is there to um, is to help the owner, but also allows the um, the town to recoup the um, the costs, the overhead costs for water. You know, a majority of the water expenses that go to a resident or home are there regardless if you turn the faucet on or not because we're treating water we paid to deliver the water to your curb stop right um well, and, 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 and in dylan's case what we've done is you know dylan is taking a building that was you know severely run down uh, that nobody really wanted and has come to the plate to get the building back up to speed and be a positive influence in downtown. So um, in Dylan's case, he's come um, under the reassurance that he's going to fix this thing up and get it going so that it will be a... Yeah, it'll uh, be two uh, part points. Right. So, you're so getting, yeah, it'll be a two. So we have abated um, his water and sewer. Two years. Right. And he's looking to do one more quarter and then he believes that he'll have it going fully and then we can charge him full max. Yeah, and about 600 so, for it. And hopefully he'll have them filled and you know everything's good. So <coughs> anything any other comments from the board or no, I make a motion we extend for another another quarter. Yeah that, I'm pretty sure that's all really it'd be good if you could really you know make an effort to have, yeah, have things ready and, and ready for that. Yeah I mean you know, you know. Oh, yeah. you, do, you do home improvements. You know that the, once you start, cost yeah. is, oh, well, hey, look at this. Well, I'm oh, sure you're yeah. anxious sure 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 to get return on your investment. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, they we're anxious. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, but it's. So we have a motion? Second it or? Second? All in favor? Okay, I just have it. We appreciate you being up front with us and. We'll and, have one uh, more thing. So. <laughs> Uh, 
I own John Henry's old place now. I just closed on that today. And uh, I don't know if any of you have been down there lately. Not recently. No. Uh, I'm probably going to ask for a similar thing down there because that place is a dump. And it's going to take some cleanup time. And there won't be anybody using any water or sewer down there either for a little while. So why don't you... Um, do, you do I need to do another letter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah you, uh, why don't you, you know, get with Therese, um, okay. do a letter with a proposal on it, and, um, and, then, and then we can get it into, you know, either the next meeting or the meeting after that to, to have you come back in and... <laughs> Spend some fun time with us. And, <laughs> yeah. And not with your kids. Your pleasure. <laughs> um, um, so, Therese, you yeah. be willing to help Dylan out with that? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, as the board has said all along, that, you know, you know, we're really, really willing to be an active participant in yeah, seeing so all these buildings that have been if you guys want to dormant swing in, or take a walk around that place with the yeah. house. And I mean, legit. Practice. No, I mean, there's still needles on the floor, so feel free to go in. You can have anything you want. <laughs> Tell me on the way out. Bring your sharpie. Uh, but yeah, you know, and then we're gonna make it. You know, we're gonna clean it up and get the rats out of there for the other people. So, I mean, realistically, we're helping out the neighborhood by buying. You know, and, yeah. well, we appreciate you. Taking on some of these challenges. Yeah, and it's not. I mean, I don't and know. Hopefully, why, everything. But. Hopefully, everything works out, and you know, you're able to make a return on investment, and we're able to have a good partner on water and sewer collections, and because um, that's kind of the way. Yeah. Because way, way this works. Well, so. as of today, you made almost eight grand <laughs> at the end of the closing. That's what you get a check. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, just work with Therese on yeah, well, that piece. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. Up with it. So, all right. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. You ready? No. Anything else in regards to Dylan's appointment? All right. <laughs> Uh, Aldrich and Elliot, we uh, apologize for being behind this evening. Um, we're normally pretty on time, but um, so I, it just must have something to do with you guys. So, um, so uh, at the last time, you know, we met, um, you know, in regards to the water master plan, you were. We were in the yeah. more in the more in the design stage, uh, engineering stage of, of everything. Uh, we'd gotten we'd gotten to go from the state, and we were kind of moving in that next stage, which was kind of your the design and consulting. Anything you wanted to add to that, Greg? Right? So, how much detail do you guys want to? Go through. Did you guys get the agreements? I think in your packets it's about 80, 80 pages. Yeah, it, it was sent in an email. It's on the packet. Um, so, 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 so I think if you can give us kind of the sure yep. sort of high level review on it. Yep. So the good news. So you have some deadlines coming up uh, as of next January that as part of the sanitary survey. So that's why we're kind of anxious to get this moving. In fact, I've got survey crew scheduled to be out here on Wednesday to start the field survey. Uh, so the state requires that we use this uh, standardized document, it's about 80 pages. Uh, there's really only a couple of sections in there that are really custom to your project. The one is obviously the, the fees. Uh, and the last piece of that is really the scope of services. Uh, we sent a draft of this up to everybody to stay reviews and approves it. They make sure that the scope's appropriate. Uh, make sure we're working on the correct areas as far as what they requested as part of the sanitary survey. Um, they also look at it to make sure that these are appropriate for the work proposed. Uh, would you like me to go through the scope of services we did briefly here? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. if you go to the very end of this document, it exhibit J, there's about five pages which covers the scope. 
And, and generally, I'll just give a quick overview out of the sanitary survey. Uh, the two primary items here are the Main Street water line replacement and addressing the uh, storage tank controls and alarms for the boulevard and the vehicle tanks. Uh, and then we also have included in here a couple other phases, uh, phase two and three, uh, for water line replacements in the area of Cushing Drive, Clifford Drive, Densmore, and on the Liberty Stable and Avon Drive. The reason for those couple of things is we coordinate that work with the uh, base project, the water line of Main Street. Um, the state's rolled out a new program. We're trying to get, you know, um, a little more better interpretation, but on a lead abatement, so there's a possibility um, that the town could be eligible for some significant grant dollars um, for the water line replacements where you have galvanized pipes. So that's the reason. So we're trying to move this quickly. It's first come, first serve. So there may be a good opportunity for the town. Uh, the other good news right now on the construction funds is the state is offering 30% or 25% uh, loan subsidy on the construction work, so that's relatively new, so that's also a great opportunity. Um, basically, they, the state has allowed the skipping of the step one pulling engineering. They've accepted the long range plan that we went through last, so that saves us some time. Uh, that's typically about another five or six month window. Uh, they have agreed to allow us to jump right into the final design engineering, which is what the scope of services is based on. And primarily, when we get to the end of this phase of work, we're ready to go to bid. We've got all the contract documents, we've got all the permits in the end, uh, we've got all the construction costs estimated. Uh, we're helping you with the you know, next November. Uh, so, when we're going through this, it includes all the field survey base work in here. We're putting all the drawings together, we're putting the front end bid documents together, uh, updating the construction costs for all these different pieces of work, uh, putting an updated schedule. Uh, we have to have multiple review meetings. So we've already <laughs> scheduled laid out, which starts this week, to get you uh, up and ready to advertise for bids in January of next year. Uh, so a lot to do here. We have to have 30, 69 percent review meetings with the town and the state. Uh, we have to do subsurface investigation of all the work we need to understand if we're dealing with ledge, high groundwater. So we've already got that scheduled in. That will be done this summer and any of the permitting assistance here too. Uh, you need a permit from the drinking water division, you need to work with uh, the agency of transportation, you need a construction permit for the uh, stormwater, uh, you need to coordinate with that 250. There's also archeological write-offs. There's an environmental report that needs to be done for the whole project that's part of the state uh, environmental review process. We've also got bond boat assistance in here to help you with that for uh, November. Um, and we've also got easement assistance in so many, so many areas of work. We may not be completely within the knee train right away or the town right away. Um, so we're going to identify places where you may need a temporary easement or permanent easement. So we'll identify those, get those under your eyes, and kind of help with your uh, town attorney. Um, primarily, with a lot of this stuff moving forward, we'll be working directly with Tim. You know, we're getting the survey started on Wednesday, spend the time in the field so we can walk the areas and kind of show and give us his thoughts on that. Uh, so that's going to start uh, start pretty quickly here. So. Um, now, I, I know we have um, <coughs> several individuals here and some may be uh, interested in um, some of the water master plan overview. Yeah. Could you just, I know, you know, that's based on most of those components. Can you just, uh, can you just go over the Last time we had a phasing sheet. Yep. Could you just go over the phasing sheet again? Sure. Um, just so some individual in the audience that may be wanting to hear about the water. Yeah, so the phase one is everything on Main Street. Uh, that also is kind of another subset of that as it requires we address the bubble controls at both of the storage tanks. Uh, and phase two includes the um, replacements on Cushing <coughs> Drive, Clifford, Densmore. And uh, phase three includes the uh, replacements in the area of Liberty Stable and, and Avon Drive. Uh, and then in addition to that, the state's required to be an inspection done on the Boulevard tank. Uh, that's going to be done by the tank manufacturer separately from us. And the cost for that is included in the uh, planning loan application that you also have in front of you tonight for consideration. I don't have any drawings, so it's kind of hard to point to something in the phases, but I think everybody's probably familiar with the areas. 
and, and, and for some of the public, so we found out the last, was the last meeting you were at or the meeting before that? Yeah, it was the about meeting. at least a month um, ago, yeah. That, uh, well, the, the initial phasing showed, you know, all three phases of, of the plan uh, with the dollar figure. Um, we'd since learned over the last half a month that um, there's some potential, um, there's some potential money available through the state for certain pipe that's already currently in the ground um, that we could get assistance on that grant money. Uh, and some of the some of the roads that we did have in our initial phase one, two, and three could potentially qualify for that money. So the initial burden on the town could be reduced, um, you know, by quite a bit um, if we're able to. We're able to take advantage of the um, this grant money that's out there to fix certain pipes that are in the ground. So, Just, but sorry, but be aware that they, they, all these programs that, that Wayne's talking about are subsidies. Yeah. So it is money that we will get. <coughs> At the beginning, we have to front the money. Front it up, put it out. Yeah. Yes, and then it comes back to us later. So. Some of the the good things that we have going for ourselves is that that we've already started this process and. And it's a fairly lengthy process to, you know, to start, you know, we've been working on this water master plan for, what, a year and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're in, a, we're in a unique situation right now that, you know, we're, we're in the final design stage. Um, and anybody else that really would like, would want to take advantage of this grant money at this point would have to start <coughs> at some stage you know, six months behind us, you know, to get going. So we're, we're you know, if things go as planned and, and uh, we're able to get the bond vote and move forward, you know, the money is first come, first serve. Um, and like Greg was saying, ha how the system works is you pay for it up front, but then pieces of that you get reimbursed on the back end of things, um, if, you, if it's qualified. You basically you don't pay that portion of all the back. Right. And there's also some, also right now there's some, um, is it interest free loans? That's right. Depending on your median household income, you can qualify for disadvantage subsidy. So you would, could decrease your interest rate from 3% down to 2 or even zero. So there's an opportunity for us to save money on the interest um, as well. Um, and um, question? Yeah. Does that <clears throat> mean that when you get the grants for this wall, this water stuff, our water bills will go down instead of up? Well, um, yeah. I, I don't, I can't tell you. <laughs> well, if that's what I'm down. saying when I read my water bill. Right. Well, where's the money coming from? But what we can tell you is that, you know, a lot of the trouble that we have with the current system, you know, if, if we leave the current system in place, it costs extra money to sit out there every once in a while and dig it up and patch it and than it is to, over the long period, to have um, a new infrastructure in there. And yeah, I, I know that, but you were talking about the grants and as they come in, and I just wanted right. to know, are our taxes going to go down or are they going to go up some more? Well, overall, in the short term, your taxes are going to go up. Uh, yeah, oh, we're going to have on. We're going to have to bond for the cost to do the work. That's in that water rate. Right. So, um, and, and it's still a conversation for the board to have on, you know, um, the percentage on how much does the, how much do the water user, users um, incur versus, you know, we can't we can't shift the entire cost to the water users because it would make it very impractical to well, pay the bill. Well, it looks to me like you have, according well, to my no, I'm yeah. alone in my house. I'm the only right. one person. And you mean to tell me that I use as much water as four or five people or four grown-ups in a in a home? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. And half the time I'm not there. I'm I'm retired, and and I go away a lot. Yep. But my bill went up. Yeah, everybody. Social Security didn't. Yeah. <laughs> what well, amazes what amazes me is that Barbara pays one equivalent unit, and Bethel Mills pays a unit and a half. Yeah. That amazes me. That it is amazes un American. Too. Yeah. The way it is. I mean, yeah. I, all I can say is. is I pay water just like you pay water. Of course you uh, do, but you get a check every week. I get one a month. Yeah. So that you can't compare that to me. I, 
how, however you live your way is, I, I'm not going to tell you how you should live. And, uh, and I not, live the way that I live. How to live. Now, what I will say that, that you can feel good about is if you look at your water rate and compare that with your neighbors or maybe the average in Vermont, you're not higher. So I'm not comparing it to the average in Vermont. I'm comparing it to what I'm paying. I understand now. that, but... And what people around me are paying. But the thing you have to understand is for so long in this town, we have done exactly that. Let's, how ch let's see how cheap we can make it so that we can pay the least amount of water bill, the least amount of taxes, the least amount of anything. Meanwhile, we let everything go by the wayside. We're not just talking water here. We're talking about everything. Right, Tim? Feel free to pitch it. It's water, it's sewer, it's roads, it's bridges, it's culverts, it's cleaning, it's everything. And that all comes with a cost. And what we would have seen if we had the foresight many years ago, I mean, we can, we can track the water thing all the way back to its existence, is if we had done things correct all the way up through here, overall our cost would be less than it is now. But when, you, but when you're short-sighted and all you do is see how cheap we can make everything in this town, and we don't put money aside to do projects and to keep the infrastructure uh, progressing in, in a positive manner, now everything needs to be rebuilt. We didn't save any money. There's nothing. <clears throat> yeah, but how fair is so, that to people that are retired and want to live in their hometown? I understand that. But for so long, for, we'll use water for a perfect instance. For so long, our water rates in the town of Bethel have been severely reduced compared to any of our neighbors. You go look at any of our neighbors. We were paying half. I don't care about that. I neighbors. understand. We have to understand how this comes I'm into I'm the one it. that I'm worried about. Me. Had yeah. we, <laughs> let's just say, had we been paying the exact same water bills as our neighbors, we probably wouldn't be in this instance because we would have money put aside in funds that we could have corrected our infrastructure as it, as it needed. Well, Instead, what we did is we put the blinders on for so long, we fixed the holes, we fixed the puddles, and, and now we've gotten to the point, you know, right, Janice? Now that we've gotten to the point where, you know, we got to be out there digging up Janice's water and shutting it off on her on Sundays, right? And that's, not, that's not fair to the enemies here. Well, so it's, what it's, we have to do at this point is we need, we have a good opportunity right now to take advantage of um, some financing options as well as grants. Um, and we've been working on this water plan for a year and a half to finally take advantage of this and put all these demons to bed. And it is going to come well, with a cost. There's my... no doubt about it. Everybody, it comes with a cost. It's going to, short term, it's going to come with a cost. But long term, and that's what we need to look at in this town, is long term, not short term. We get to stop the short term discussions in this town. We have to think long term, not just you and I, but your grandchildren, my grandchildren, everybody else's grandchildren. Since, since we're doing all of this now, was there any thought of water meters so that people who use a lot of water will pay more okay, and people yes, like yeah. Barbara will pay less? Is, was there any thought of that or that, you know, since you have such wonderful financing available? There, there has been very little discussion in regards to water meters at this point and not for the reason that you think. The, the construction that we're talking about right now, if we do the work or don't do the work, doesn't have anything to do with water meters. We're talking about, we're talking about the delivery service to uh, our, our delivery service of the town. No, I if understand. we were going to talk, so we can, we can continue to have the, we're going we're gonna to have a discussion. And at some point, once we get past some of this, we are going to look at the options of, because water meters is, is the billing end of it. But the, the, it's unfair to people like Barbara, okay, to have her pay one equivalent unit. And not that I hate Bethel Mills, but they pay a unit and a half. Right. They have 35 employees. They have the public come in. They hose down the trucks. They're using water all the time. They pay a half more equivalent unit than Barbara does. Okay. That's not right. It's just, it's the system. And I'm thinking that since you have all of this wonderful financing available, why couldn't you include the $300,000 
for water meters now and have it just one lump thing and do it as you go along. Well, why we haven't determined that that's the best possible action going forward to the town. Now, we have done, we, we, we have dug into the water meters in the past. And what the water meters have told us is our current system is built on the EU. So if I'm one EU, I can wash my truck or I can do whatever I want with my water. And yes, I might be paying the same amount as Bethel Mills. However, what we have determined by looking at some of the cost, the potential model of looking at the water meters is, we could get in a situation, or it's likely that we would get in a situation where I put a meter on your house, and you're gonna be paying just as much, if not more, than you are now, and then you're gonna say, I can't use my water to wash my car today. I can't, I can't water my roses today because that's going to cost me three dollars and fifty cents a I, gallon. I would really, if you that's have, the if issue you you're going to get into. Yeah. you have those examples, I would really like to sit down with you, possibly Teresa, and I would like you to explain how that it's works. Going to cost, yeah. Because right. in the court case that I had against the town, I studied that at length. And that wasn't my result of my study. The, the, first, the first thing that is challenging on the water meter issue is the amount, the limited amount of accounts that we have in the town of Bethel, okay? So we have to take the, how many accounts do we have in the town of Bethel? Therese, right Three hundred and Yeah, it's three, three hundred and change. So you take three hundred and change. Instantly, you have to take three or four hundred thousand dollars for your water meters, right? Just to purchase them. Then you get to add the cost of, reading them, maintenance of them, and get that dollar figure, and then divide it by 300. It's done electronically. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then you have to, then you have to divide it by 300 accounts. It's a very large sum of money to then be put onto the service. Because all we're talking about, Janice, the thing is, is approximately 80% of our charge to the household right now is fixed. <coughs> That has nothing to do with um, water meters. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So if we have water meters or not, you're going to pay 80% of that no matter I pay, what. I pay. That's for three I equivalent that. units mm -hmm. for four people. Explain right. to me how that is fair. If I have four people living in the building mm -hmm. and I pay three equivalent units, which is double the amount yep. that Bethel Mills pays. That is not right. Okay. No, it's that, that's part of that, if you have an apartment building and you're going to rent it out to three individuals and you're going to have three separate households living on water. That's no, the way it goes. Three, three you, separate households. Yeah. The, the amount of water that I use is mm -hmm. so much less yeah. okay, than Bethel Mills, and I pay double what Bethel Mills pays. That is not fair. And I think water meters should be included in all of this. Right. Because if you're going to finance $3 million, then what's another 300000 when you're financing at 0%? Currently, we have not done the studies enough to see if moving forward with water meters is the way we want to go. Around. I've done the studies, and you're wrong. Um, I would then feel free, feel free the only reason feel that free, to, Janice. Feel free to the hand the board. I lost the case is because of the antiquated law that is in the state of Vermont. Because when I started out, they said to me, "Well, we have hundreds of towns like this," and I said, "Well, that's really too bad. I live in Bethel, so that's where we're going to start." But that's why the law is still on the books because all of these other towns can't handle it. It was the fact that the pipes, and I was told this by somebody in the know, that the pipes are scary in this town. That was the technical term that was used. Yeah. And that's, well, that's why, why you have to do it now. Right. Well, feel free, feel free to hand over any information that you have. We will. will and, and, and they're kind of two separate issues, because we're talking about, you know, right now what we're talking about is the delivery end of things, not the other distinction is the majority of this work must be corrected the tons of a choice. Water meters aren't required, so right. very important distinction between what's required here and what's not required in water meters. 
It and, may not be required, but it is fair. And, and we've made the promise to you, Janice, that we will look into when we get to the phase of you know, we started on when did we start looking at some of the different billing options? Was that last it was a year, year, year. September? Yeah. October. So we started looking at some remember you were here to some of them. We started looking at some options, other options to build. Yeah, you know, we I had some, somebody made a comment about yeah. well we have to worry about the dishwashers in the apartments <laughs> in Bethel. Well, that person probably was never in an apartment in Bethel because there are no dishwashers. Um, so we, we will continue, we will continue to, as we have in the last year, we will continue to look at other billable options in the town. And I have told you that we will look at water meters. I mean, if it makes sense to put water meters, we'll do water meters if it makes sense. You know, we want to do what makes sense. Now, right now, Regardless of how we're billing for it, right now we're told from the state of Vermont that our billing system is fair. So that's what we're going to stick with for now. Okay? What we need to work on is what the gentleman there here is to work on the delivery system. Because the delivery system oh, is what is troublesome in the town right now. That is very important. And, and, and unfortunately it is burdening us. You know, we are seeing our water, you know, our water rates have increased. Um, and, and we probably haven't seen the end of the increases, but we're getting to a point where we can safely say, on a Sunday, we're not gonna be out there fixing brakes, we're not gonna have to boil water for three days, and we're gonna, right now, hopefully take advantage of, um, you know, when you're, when you're talking, you know, a project that is in the million, million plus dollar, you know, taking advantage of low interest rates is a, is a, a huge kickback to a town as well as the potential of maybe getting one of our three phases covered by grants. So, so there, there's a good, you know, we're in a good spot right now. And, and maybe we can use some of that money towards looking at water meters after. That but right be, now- That right, would be fair and I would hope you do that. Right, and I would just say, if you have any information, feel free to pass it along to Therese or myself <coughs> or any of the board members and be more than willing to look through it. Well, then I just wanted to clarify. So we're doing all the engineering for phases two and three. Um, the reason for that is we're just trying to hit the ground running. You know, that subsidy forgiveness is first come, first serve. Uh, they're going to be ready to go. If for some reason you can't fund all of that or some portion, um, that's going to be a select board decision that's follow, you know, what's in and what's not. So we don't do that light work now and get a front of everything. Um, and you're not going to get any of that. So we'll see where we're at here. Questions in regards to the proposal, or Tim, did you have Tim or Therese or Greg? Do you guys have any questions? No, we just need to get going. That's all. We, this is our our best avenue. We're actually, if we'd have been ready this year, the disadvantage subsidy was 1.19 million dollars for Bethel. So we've got to stop dicking around. We've got to get it done. Okay. So what what do you need from us tonight? Well, just I guess. Um, authorization for signature approval engineering agreements. Uh, I've got two original signature for I've already signed them. And but I'm also here if you want me to stick for the uh, drinking water planning loan application too. And I was down in your agenda for a couple of hours. Okay. Do um, Greg do we need them to stick around for <coughs> the other I don't think you do. You know you also yeah, I think we're okay. Good. It's pretty sure it's all it is. Yeah. It includes a request for the engineering portion plus the uh, and inspection of the boulevard tank that will pull those allowances right in there. So, okay. okay. So he needs a motion uh, to authorize me to sign okay. this uh, engineering services agreement. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, Want to, but it's, it's I think it's okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
touch base with you on that tomorrow. We'll okay. Get the um, audits and stuff to that. Do I? Okay, just the two, right? Just yeah. the two yeah. sections. Okay, you guys can keep it. No, that's fine. Take a break. If you can do one, great. What I'll do is bring it back and scan it tomorrow, and then I can send it back out to you guys, and I'll send a copy of the state at the same time. So right now, um, I, I had written down some notes through the discussion here. So we're looking at an advertisement of January, and then a, uh, a bond vote in November. Is that what? That's what you're talking about. November 2019, do your bond vote, and yeah. then 2020 for that bid. Yeah. And if, so we will probably need an informational meeting. That's um, those are already, well. yeah. well, already in the agreement. Well, yeah. Um, and then when would we be hosting it? You know, August, September. It's going to be within ten days of the vote. Is um, it within ten days? So the challenge we're having this year is there isn't any real election in November. Yeah. Um, you can kind of pick whichever day you want to do the vote on. You know, you got to do the you know the thirty day warnings and everything. Um, the challenge we have is if you wait till March. We're going to do the bond vote. Um, it's getting late to put it out the bid. We're typically putting all this type of work out, you know, in January, February time frame. That's when you get the best pricing. So um, if you don't do the vote until March of next year, then you get the 30 day appeal period and you're putting it late and you get a 30 day bid period. You know, it's not open bids until April or May on a project of this size. It can affect the prices, you know, 15, 20%. Right. What do you say? You have to wait that 30 days after the election. That's right. To do the award, right? yeah. 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 So, um, I think it's November. I think sometimes non-election times are the best times to bond vote. So definitely it's going to be a big education piece about that. And yep. So that'll be interesting to, to do it. So we'll be starting that discussion, you know, after probably Labor Day weekend. You can think about the date, you know, and, you know, we'll help put an information flyer. We can have at least one information meeting. Uh, you can have two if you choose to. Uh, you're required to have one within the 10 days, and we can work with your bond council mm -hmm. and, Kind of help you through that process. I think weren't you talking at some point? I don't, I'm not sure how far we got with that whole conversation about the possibility of not putting the whole bond on just the water system. But weren't you talking about right. still a conversation to be had about about sending that? Yeah, so we'll have to that make that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, right. and it depends so on the language and the ordinance. That's and some other issues. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. So it depends. The the bond warning is written pretty generally. Uh, it's in the information itself that you probably want to be transparent to people and explain how you want to pay the debt retirement. Um, but you're not required to put in there how you're going to pay for it. And by that I mean, is it going on the water 100%? Is it going on the water some portion on the tax rate? Um, I do want to talk to that when we get to that point. Uh, totally understand the high water rates. And I've been involved in this stuff here in the past over the years. Uh, got to be a little careful about putting some portion on the tax rate. Um, I haven't had many bond votes not passed, but that's a, that can be a deal killer. Uh, and there's a bunch of reasons for that, so we want to, you know, we can talk about those options when we get a little bit closer uh, about the pros and cons and the three kind of to go there as we get into, you know, get through later in the early fall. We can talk about that more. And it was just kind of a thought that they had in passing, and yep. it could be. So there's definitely a lot. He's right. There's pros and cons. It depends how people feel about it. But it's definitely you need to be able to educate the voters as to how you're going to pay before they're going to vote yes on something. But like, it's definitely yeah. a good conversation to have, and it could be just an exercise to figure out, you know. The best I mean, I know we do. have to have our informational meeting within the lot of time. Or yeah. But I guess I was thinking of maybe, you know, if we're looking at November. Maybe in late September, or some time in September, <laughs> we ought to dedicate a meeting. I know we're getting into budgets and stuff, but we ought to dedicate yeah. a meeting. Yeah. A, a meeting where we can advertise heavily for the public. Yeah. And I think we should target it more on the funding. Yeah. Or how we will be paying this back. And that way it allows us two months to get information back from the public. So if we, if we get a lot of information that says, you know, this could be a deal killer because of this percentage we're looking to put on the taxpayers, let's say. It allows us some time to work on that before we go 
Because if we do just an informational meeting 10 days before, mm -hmm. no. and we get some information back, it's not mail, good. You're going to have you know. some mailing. This is a, this is, this is a right. marathon, not a sprint. You're going to have right. to do a, a mailing and kind of get people out there and you want opinions and, and all that. So it's, it's a process, but it's a great process. Well, it's I guess I'm just concerned, you know, being the history of the town here, yeah. you know, being in and around the board is typically we don't have a very large participation. Yeah, that's why the mailing until the vote until the vote and for town meeting day, and then we get a lot. And I would hate for a lot of voters to be uninformed going Absolutely. to the voting pool. Um, so even if we had a couple of multiple meetings, even if they're not quote unquote um, the informational meeting, we could have it on the agenda to make sure that people are well aware of what we're trying to do. Even, and, even before that. In probably September, we need to be talking about, you know, what what's the funding that's available, you know, how much subsidy, how much forgiveness, what's the interest rate like, how big's the project, is phase one in, is it phase one and two? Because we need to kind of have those discussions to understand what your debt retirement is, what the impact of the water rates and all that stuff, even we'll cover that next discussion to say, is it going on the water rates, is it going on the, you know, some of the, so that's probably something, you know, right after Labor Day weekend we should hit into anyways. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Good. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So if we pass this, we'll have you sign one of these, and if we need the additional, we'll come back. But <coughs> I think she, had, she wanted two signed because one goes to one is ours and one goes to Russell. So I do think that we want to have two signed. Yeah, we'll sign if you approve. We'll sign two copies. So this is um, for our tax maps. Uh, this is something we get done every year. This is the, the gentleman who comes in and makes the revisions to our tax maps. It's through all of our records and our, our uh, all what pretty permitting for that year. And produces, um, I think I believe it's two copies or three copies, three sets of property maps. Yeah, and the book, big books, uh, they're really good maps. We use them all the time. The, the clerk uses them all the time. So uh, this is the same gentleman that's been doing this for the last at least since I've been here. I think he did it two years before me. So four years or so he's been doing it. So this is just a, a continuation of that uh, uh, up till 2020. So, so this is a per year contract. Yes, that cost is per year. And that and that number is fixed for three years. The number is fixed for twenty one. Mm -hmm. okay. And that number coincides with what we budgeted. And yeah, it's what I see. I believe the same as what it was last time. Last time we did this contract. Have we had any issues with his work? He does a great job. He really does a great job. He does a lot of municipalities. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's not a lot, you know, a lot of surveyors used to do the tax maps, but they're kind of, they're getting away from it, but he's, his name, I know his name before I came, and uh, <coughs> he does I, I think he does quality work, he gives yeah, us the maps, nice. and, yeah, he gives us the maps in the book, and we get a CD and everything, so it's, uh, I think it's, it's pretty quality work. Does he, re does he review um, um, current sales, why not, to update what the, these tax maps going to look like? Yes, so he's looking at the sales permits, he's looking at new plats that have come in. So he's trying to update you know, not only the dimensions of the, the parcels, but the, the ownership of the parcels. So this gives him the ability to come in to the, to the clerk's records and, and have free reign of the records, if you will, to do his research. He's been doing this for how long now? At least two years before I started. So this is about four years so far. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will tell you, like, I know for a fact, the piece of property that I'm on, not even close. The the what? The ownership or the dimensions? The dimensions, the way it looks? 
not even close. Well, it could be that they're combined. So if you've got, on those tax maps, those are not legal parcel maps. So if you've got adjacent owners on both, on, that both lots are owned by the same owner, those are combined on tax map for tax purposes. So it may, it, so don't take a tax map, this is for everybody, don't take a tax map as a boundary map. Not even close to the same thing. Tax map is for tax purposes only. So you might have one giant lot that might, in reality, legally, might be three or four lots owned by the same person. It's just they're, they're molded together for tax purposes. It's actually a tax savings to the owner. So that may be why it looks a little odd to you. I would say because it's, yeah. I mean, it shows me having a distinct piece of property. I actually don't miss much. Yeah. Is yeah. your property survey? <coughs> uh, the part of the property I own is. Yeah. Actually, it was all surveyed. Well, you should speak to Louise. Yeah, you because should. Because he comes yeah. and updates, and maybe he missed something in your in your survey. Yeah. So definitely bring yeah. it to her. Yeah, any information that we can get additional, we'll, we'll incorporate it into it. Sure. Okay. But that's what this is. <laughs> My taxes follow the size of the property, not the size of the land. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll get a few extra dollars out of the day. You're getting enough to work. <laughs> All right, so I would entertain a motion to enter into the agreement um, to have Russell Graphics uh, continue to produce our tax maps for, for uh, 19, 20, and 21. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. Great. As we were just talking about briefly, um, with Aldridge and Elliott, the um, state revolving loan fund. Yep, so um, that agreement that you just agreed to and signed, this is the funding mechanism for that. Uh, this is the step two drinking water loan. Uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, gonna cover the, the design of phases one, two, and three, which are within that, that scope of services for the engineering that we just talked about. So, um, the state revolving fund alone, that would, that, that's, the, that's the entity we're dealing with here. Um, but this will cover the, the next piece. Uh, we utilize the same program for the water master plan. Uh, so we're just piggybacking on that. Uh, we also were able to roll the cost of um, the inspection for the tank up there is in this application as well, which was kind of a, an oddity, but they, they pushed the right buttons, our engineers pushed the right buttons, and they got it to, to cover that as well. So. Um, would entertain. Uh, this is the 133 street? Yes. Yes. That's the design. That's the engineering design for phases of one, two, and three. Yeah, out of this will come uh, your final design and uh, we can help out with the, um, with the loan itself and help out with the bond and, and some other ideas. Or, so this is just uh, the funding for the, the engineering services agreement. And then from this, um, the next step will be we apply for the construction part of this. And this all gets rolled into one, all, all steps initially get rolled into one loan. So this does re uh, require signatures from all of the board members if you choose to approve it. Uh, I, <clears throat> I realize that it, this was made out some time ago, but are we going to be in any uh, fault by having your name still on this? Uh, no. Well, no. No, no, it's going to be submitted tomorrow anyway. Okay. <coughs> so, Any questions that I can answer? Did you have an opportunity to look through this? I did some of the um, numbers for Greg. Um, uh, so the user date, uh, user reference. Someone will look at the state. I just looked at the whole thing. I just did a piece for him. So, but it's, I think it's the same information that he did last time. Right? Yeah, it's the same thing we submitted. Yeah. So it's basically a boilerplate, so we'll just submit it for the, the yeah, master plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I would entertain a motion to. The state revolving loan program and sign. Okay, all in favor? No, yeah.
and there are printed, printed names on the list. Find it just right, you can grab the balloon on one side. I know. <laughs> about what that one ton, what the resale of that one ton would be and what we could do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as options for trucks that we, we thought would be a little more adequate to handle the workload of Camp Brook, uh, primarily with the wing and everything like for, for winter snow removal. Uh, and what he has found is, is, and I put this in your packet, but it's this international truck that he uh, has found that is so part of the problem with these trucks is the availability. So when you order a truck, it usually takes a few months to get that thing put together. Uh, it could take up to six months to get these trucks put together and outfitted and everything and get them to where they're usable. So he has found um, a couple of these trucks in a dealership that are already built, the, the cabin chassis and the, the beds already on it. Um, it would just need to have the plow and the wing and the sand all put together. Um, so he had asked this, this salesman to give us some prices on these trucks, finished trucks, with everything we needed, um, so that we could talk about the board and, and, and I could talk about possibly replacing uh, the one ton with something like this. So um, the, the one ton has still got a couple more quotes to give. The initial quote is, is going to be not, a, well, it's going to be probably in the 20 to 30 thousand dollars. Uh, it has some mechanical issues, it's had mechanical issues since I think the day that we got it. Uh, it's got some other issues that have started to kind of show up as well. So, so that's just for the, the chassis cabin? That's the whole thing. That's the whole truck. That's the truck and the sander and everything that's on. That's like you would thing. be moving the equipment that's on the current no. truck to this cabin chassis? No, no. no. It would be new. That much for that money? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't see the plow or the sand or anything in these. Yeah, that's just the truck. truck. That's the okay. truck. I've got a quote here in an email that I got after that okay. Okay. that tells me everything. Okay. This is 54 now. Yeah, so the final price completely packaged out is $110,000. That's completely ready to go. So part of what the thought is is that. So the Ford, the, the Ford is going to be worth something, thirty thousand dollars or whatever. Uh, that's most likely going to be a trade-in value. And I, well, like most things, the trade-in value is probably going to be higher than the cash value of that car. So part of what the thought process was is because we really don't have a truck that these guys can go ride around in and, and go do smaller type jobs that don't require a dump truck or a, or a one time uh, would be to use them whatever funds we get from that one ton and trade that in on a used truck, just a pickup truck. And then I've been working with the capital plan, moving some things around, trying to figure out how I would find, come up with roughly $115,000, $110,000 in the capital plan. 
and that's that spreadsheet that I put in your packet there. Uh, shows what that would look like. And essentially what it does is it, it pushes the replacement of one of the, the, the blue dump trucks back in here. That's how we make up that difference. Uh, the other thing that's on here that you do not see is the replacement of the grid, which has been pushed back already. Um, this pushes that out even further, probably into 2024. Um, so, just wanted to kind of start the ball rolling on this a little bit. Um, you know, the, the big discussion that we all had was, I think we all feel that the, the one ton is not the adequate piece of equipment to do the work up on Camp Road. Um, because just, just judging by the mechanical issues that we've had with that truck day after day after day. Um, so just, we're just brainstorming here as to a way that we might be able to to move things around, get the equipment that we know will do the job up there, will last longer, as well as get the, the public works department something so they're not driving these other larger trucks into the ground. Um, a used, you know, half ton pickup or something like that is, is something that they could use to go out and do signs, they could do pot, some pothole work, they could do the smaller stuff they, they would do, drive the back roads to, to monitor for, you know, the work that they need to do or whatever. Uh, right now, they're, they're, that one time is being used all winter, up and down Camp Brook and down in the, in the village here, as well as as a go around for everything in the summertime too. And it's just mechanically, it's just not holding up to all that. So that's the one time. That's the one time. I'm gonna hold up to you for 50 miles an hour. That's my drive when I hit those crossings and it started going 20 feet in the air and blowing out windows. So that's anyway. That's what we're proposing here. Um, What's this going to do to the push back of the first runners? I mean, are we going to start running into a lot more buildings or something? I mean, it's a possibility, yes. I mean, the rotation on the old rotation on them typically should be seven years. Right. And this is pushing them back to thirty, yeah, thirteen to twenty-one. So that's an eight-year on one and a nine-year on the other. So we're going to wear more. And that, and again, that doesn't put the grader in here. Now, there's a couple things that could be changed on this. You know, where this is assuming that the Appropriation stays the same every year. Um, that could go up <laughs> to try to you know, cover this a little quick, more quickly. Um, the grader is going to be, I don't know, what's a new grader? 250? 350? 350? Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's a foregone conclusion that the equipment that we are using, some of the equipment that we're using up at the shop, isn't any good. And it's killing us. Um, we've had so much lost revenue, we've lost money just in downtime and mechanical issues. Even the stuff that's covered with the one time by the, um, you know, being under warranty, we still have the time, the downtime of the truck. We have the, the man hours to get that thing up there and get it back down and all that. So just looking at options, some sort of an option to try to get something that might work for us up there and last longer, as well as give these guys something or get something for the fort. Um, I, I just, I don't know what the cash value of that Ford is going to be. Uh, I think we'd be better off trying to get another piece of equipment for it, another truck for it, as opposed to just getting cash for it. Um, but that is an option. That, that's something that when these estimators come out, they can, I'm sure they'll give us a cash, a cash price as well as a trade value on the truck. So, just want to get it out there. Um, this was my kind of quick and dirty as far as how to, to make this work. Um, but it has to, you, you have to push something out. It, it's, it's inevitable. Something's got to be. So, I, I mean, I, looking through it, I mean, I completely agree that, you know, on some, some of our equipment pieces, we've been, again, very short-sighted on replacing them over a period of time. And like we saw this winter, we went through a very large maintenance bill, um, which, you know, isn't sustainable going forward. I mean, we can't continue to shell out the type of bills we were. Um, but what, what it, it makes it hard for me right now to stand behind any type of piece of equipment not knowing, being that we haven't sat down to deal with how our winter maintenance is going to look like. And I, and I think some of, some of my concerns anyways are the reason why certain pieces of our equipment are in the state that they are in, and this is not you know, just your tenure here, but ten years before is 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 the work that we're doing with these pieces, and some of these pieces are not. You know, we should not be plowing 
you know, off Campbrook Road with one ton truck. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I mean, any one ton truck that plows up Campbrook Road's life is going to be drastically reduced. I mean, that's just my opinion. But I, I think, and this, and this might be, this might be the, this might be the resolve that we need. But until we have that conversation on what this winter maintenance schedule or how we're going to ship trucks around looks like. So that we can ensure going forward we have the right piece of equipment for the right job. I, it, it's hard for me to get behind this because I, I don't know if this is the right piece of equipment that we need. Um, I do know that there are certain pieces of equipment that need to be retired and this is one of them because it's costing us a lot of money but I just don't know like, you know, is this the right piece of equipment? Should we be looking for something bigger? Should we be looking for something other than at all? I mean, I don't know, but I mean, what is the... I have a statement, it's an F-550, it's over one ton. It's rated for the exact same thing that the International is in the pamphlet for weight ratings. It's just apples to apples as far as the load that it hauls the work that it does. Uh, we suggested a six-wheeler dump truck to plow Cambrook that has two-thirds more of a weight rating than that. Um, I think that's an option that can be looked at. And, and, I, and I, I understand, you know, Greg's concern is if we don't, if we delay an action, well, let's say this is the right piece of equipment that we really do need. If we do delay that, we could put ourselves in a position where we may not get it before snow flies, and you could be in a position of being down a piece of equipment, you know, and being a tough winner for us. But there's a high likelihood that one time will not plow this summer or this spring. Right. No. But I think, we just, I think we need to, and I know we've been meaning to have the discussion, but we've had, we've, we've had various other things that have popped up recently, like the flood, um, that has taken precedence over it. But I think until we sit down with the Public Works employees and have that conversation on what does, what does our plan look like for next winter, where do we see certain pieces of equipment plowing and not plowing, what material we're going to put on our roads. I, I think until we have that discussion, it's hard for us to figure out, you know, big truck, little truck, somewhere in between this sander, that sander, you know. Uh, I mean, that's just my thought. I mean, but Why are we plowing our biggest road with our one of our smallest trucks? That I don't understand. Because that's our biggest road. The other ones we've got, I've got, so they're using salt on camp road. And so the bigger trucks are all running dirt. And, and honestly, that's the way it was always done, too. Um, I, don't know that, I don't know that the one time they do the dirt lifts, would it? I mean, you're pushing the same amount of snow as you are everywhere else. But that's my point, is maybe, you know, well, maybe we can move trucks around to better utilize what we have. Or maybe we need a, another bigger truck. I, I don't know what the solution is other than I think you know, we're kind of putting the cart in front of the horse if we want to purchase something before we actually know what our plan of attack is for. I think Not I just this winter, but and beyond. I think I agree with you, Chris. I think we ought to see what we're going to do for, for better maintenance this year and see what we need from there. But we also need to... Oh, yeah, but we know we're going to have to do something. Oh, yeah. We need to... Yeah, but we don't want to rush into buying something. No, no, no. We we need need to, we're, we're talking $115,000 piece of equipment. Yeah. And, and not just to mention you know, this, but <coughs> this could counteract when we can purchase our next freight liners, um, which we know are very critical to plowing, as well as a grader, which we pushed back last year, right? And now we would be pushing back again. Um, you know, and that needs to be replaced, you know, soon, too. So, um, I mean, I, I think at this point, we, regardless of what happens tomorrow, you know, if we get another flood tomorrow, I think we need to make, we need to, we need to come in here and have a discussion in regards to the winter plan and figure out what that's going to look like. And then if we need to purchase a piece of equipment to meet that, then we need to take action on that. But, I mean, I could. Well, it sounds like the one time is pretty much a done deal. Well, I think, I think it's given that the one ton is, is a money pit and it, 
you know, we've sunk, I'm sure Therese could pull something up that shows how many thousands or tens of thousands of dollars we put in that thing, but, and it's probably pretty scary, and it probably needs to go bye bye but what do we replace it with? You know, is this the answer? Is it, do we need another big truck? Um, you know, I don't know what that is, but I think we need to, you know, I know we have, we're finishing up the FEMA stuff, we're going to have some sort of interim management here, and, but I think we need to push this agenda through quickly because we are, we're almost to July, you know, um, and I uh, hate to say it, but, you know, the days seem to go a little shorter once we get over the July 1st, and when are we here before we know it? Did we look at a truck that's similar to uh, Doug's truck? I think that's what we're talking about over here, yeah. yeah. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is the equivalent to our 550 that we have now. It's it's on a it's on a little thicker frame. It's a little it's it's a it's of the size of those truck. Mm -hmm. The hood's the same size, but it holds a third of those truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think we I mean we we obviously need to have the talk. I mean yes, this past winter was a very difficult one, and let's hope that. Like that, they usually aren't, but um, you know, we, we need to have that discussion not just on the equipment we need to use for this winter, but also what our practices will be on material for the roads. And right. uh, you know, because this past winter, I mean, we were a hundred and I don't know, I'll round out just over a hundred thousand dollars in extra winter cost, you know, and that's a combination of material and fuel and breakdowns and overtime and you know so we I think we need to have that discussion sooner rather than later. Well um, what we're putting on the roads dictates, you know, the one time was being used because it was what had solved and that kind of that might change things around a bit. We have to, I, I don't know what the the board wants to do with this. Oh, I think um, we need to have the, uh, have the discussion guys when we had a little get together there a few months ago. That's some good suggestions about We're going to decide on our, on our road policy too, whether you don't have a clear road policy or a safe road policy or whatever. Do you have to plow every road three, every three hours or every five and a half hours or once a day? There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of conversation that could be had. I mean, we clearly need to do something on multiple fronts, not just equipment, but, you know, right equipment for the job and is it safe to say that we could organize public works and invite them into the next meeting that we have on the 24th and start that discussion on how does our, I mean, again, I think we talked about it as a board that we didn't really want to make a policy. We want to have a maintenance schedule. I mean, this is not something we say, oh, Jason, what are you doing with that salt? You can't use that. But it allows, you know, it gives direction of this is kind of the way the town would like to do things. Um, rather than let's just use salt first and say in second, or let's plow Camp Brook Road with the one ton versus one of the heavier trucks. You know? uh, how does that look? And not to kill kill a good idea. Mm -hmm. It probably probably is a good idea that we need to get something. I just don't know what it is. Do you have minutes from that get together that we've had? No, no, that wasn't the Just one book and two. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, a lot of that came up. So, anytime you want to come in and talk about the one times individually, I'll, I'll yeah. take it up. Just say it in. So you can understand why we took the oh, time frame. Let's go. I know. Mm -hmm. But I get, I get, we'll set that up for the 24th. We'll help the, the highway boys come in. I guess we'll talk. Think we can put something together, Jason, you and the, your peers on. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right. So let's do that for the 24th. We'll have that discussion. Perfect. All right. Any further discussion regarding that? We have made it. Um, I know we called it. We call it EWP. Mm -hmm. Program, right? We'd add this to the agenda. Uh, do you want to do Betty Camp first? I think she's waiting just to make changes for the minute. Do you want to just, do you want to, I don't think you can make her wait any 
longer. Everybody's good with it. Yeah. All right. You had. Oh yes, the changes to um, the minutes. It mentioned that the can the scammel headstone had fallen over. It's not the scammel headstone. It's the lot next to us to the south. Okay. It's a much taller headstone, and that one has fallen over. And I'm sorry <coughs> to the people that have that cemetery lot. Ours is going to at some point, but it's a much shorter stone, so it doesn't have the gravity that's going to tip it as quickly. Um, and also, it said. Um, did you get that, Lisa? I'll fix them, I vote. Okay. I'll I'll yeah. I said, did you get that, Teresa? I did, yeah. Okay. yeah. There's no longer um, access to the cemetery because of the ditches. And then it said, comma, except from Kirk's Road. There was no access to the cemetery from Kirk's Road. You could simply pull your cars onto Kirk's Road to get out of, off of Christian Hill. <coughs> but if you follow that road straight out, that's where you will find those other three culverts. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't say you could park there forever. I'm just saying I pulled in and I did. It, yeah. So and oh, I parked and then I backed back out. This is Kirk's Road. Is that? It's on Christian Hill. Right. Is that a, a road that goes up a course, up like up his driveway or something? No, it goes right parallel to the cemetery tree line. You is it a just, private road? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are those our culverts in towns or his? His, I think. I don't know. It never should have been permitted to this town. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he. Okay. And it goes completely parallel right across the top of the entire northern right. part of Cherryville Cemetery. And it dumped originally four culprits. One is the first one you see, okay. which is the largest That's culprit. That's why we figured out what we So there are three others past that okay. that you walk out through. You have to beat the bushes. So these are three or four private culverts on yeah. a road that probably isn't supposed to be there in the first place. Uh, yes, and they all, dis they all discharge that. right onto cemetery <laughs> lines. Gotcha. That's why I said. Now I understand completely what you're talking about. That's why I said the fix is going to be a little, yeah, it's going to be a little sensitive, but the other one we'll be able, we'll be able to take care of pretty quickly. This one's going to take a little effort. Thank you. But now I know. Thank you. I got it. I got it. You got that, Therese? I did. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, while we're on the select board minutes, is there any other corrections? I approve the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you for coming. All right, we will go back to the emergency watershed protection program. Reason thrown that in late today, um, something that we do have to act on. So, you well, just, just give us a brief overview of that. Yeah, we just found out that the cutoff is June 15th. So we found that out today. So, I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, great. so we have at least one resident who will possibly qualify for this standards on Gilly and Brook Road. And um, I talked to Michael Appoint, and he's the one who runs the program. What he said is basically the letter, the only thing we're committing to by this letter is the fact that. He's he or one of his people will come out and we are guaranteeing that someone from the town will show him where this you know property is and he'll take a look at it. I also spoke to Jason Borg, who's the river guru, like a river like permit. <laughs> and he said yes, he thought that this um, program that this property would qualify because there's specific requirements. And one of Jay Jaren's comments was, you know, Trees, I think you should go ahead with it because you know, you've had a lot of flood damage in Bethel, and you might as well go through this process at least once with one person before you, you know, another time, another flood event or rain event, and you have a bunch of people at once. So what happens is with this program is that the, the resident is eligible for um, funding up to 75% from the, from the feds. And then they're on the hook. Well, it says we are. We're the sponsor. So we're on the hook for the 25% balance of that, as well as the, you know, O&M for the next 10 years. However, 
what we can do is we can enter an agreement with the landowner and require them to pay the 25% and we can transfer the 10 year O&M to them. And he said that, Michael said a lot of people do that. The owner of this property was also said he knew he would pay the 25% and he knew he didn't want us responsible you know, for the maintenance, for the upkeep right. of it. But it's okay. specific, it, it has to be like, it's not just, if your stream bank has eroded and you lost two feet, <laughs> if you have debris on your lawn, they're not going to help you. That isn't going to help you. This is only if another event is going to you know, take out a barn or, or a road or your home, or then they can come in and, and basically it's just erosion prevention. So I see the town incurring a little bit of legal cost here to get the attorney to draft you up an agreement that says this person is going to pay for the 25% either upfront or whatever and um, they're going to do the open m the you know, maintenance on it. The, other than that, it would, you know, it allows the resident, if we don't sponsor this, they don't, they're not going to get the 75%, which, you know, could affect, a, you know, one of our roads. I'm not sure where this gentleman's property is exactly. I'm Gilead, but Greg probably knows. Like, you, you, did you go? Or is that one of those? No, I've been there. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, one of the million that you uh, It's a sheer cliff that's eroding, it's being undercut. And it's probably 30 to 35 feet away from our road. So if it continues the way it is, it'll eventually it'll get there. And so we would be responsible for, um, you know, putting the project out to bid. Um, but the good thing is that this program, the USDA, they they have the plan. They they come out and they will give us the plan on how to build the engineering. So. They do the engineering, we put it out, we put it out, you know, out to bid. They do have someone who oversees the project, you know, comes and checks on, and also and the road foreman, you know, would have to keep an eye on it as well. But um, the only thing they don't do is, like, if there's any cost overrun. But he said his experience in doing this, the most he ever had is, like, $3 and some change for seed. <coughs> and, uh, you know, the owner picked it up. So I'm sorry it was just such a short notice, but, you know, Greg had him go to... Two Rivers, which makes sense, and but Two Rivers didn't tell us that we had a, you know, that there was a deadline on this. Um, so we just got the information, um, you know, all this EWP bribe from Florida and all this other stuff. We just barely got this stuff. So that's, uh, you know, the recommendation is that from Jaron Borg who said that we do it. Obviously, the resident. You know, I was looking for you to do it, and it makes sense if we can do it with one person, and if you've got the legal template to do the, to do the, um, get them to pay the twenty-five percent and do the OME. If we had another event, which is definitely <coughs> well, that we would have had these things hashed out. You know, had the legal agreement done, and, and it's really the only thing that we can do to assist the resident. So we're you're just looking for the approval on seeing if we want to offer the program right. well, I mean, to anyone that may be... It's for you to sign the letter, right. And yeah. then so far we just have one person. And then yeah. there is a little flyer and I put some on the table about the emergency protection program. We could have Kelly you know a lot of people. Now there are specific things that, you know, that can qualify. It's not like every, every issue is not going to qualify for this. Greg said there may be a couple more. Um, Jaron, I asked him if he was aware of any at this point, and he said no, this and is the only one. And he's talking to the same people that I have, so the, yeah. other, the others probably aren't even going to... Then maybe, well, they're maybe there's some requirement they're not. Yeah. So, so that's the only thing the letter, uh, by a motion to have Chris sign the letter, is that it, we're going to have to send somebody out there with this, when this gentleman shows up to show him the property. And then he'll look at it and let us know if it qualifies. And if it qualifies, then we move forward and... and um, you know, we get the town attorney to draft a, a template, and then we have it for the future. And we also understand how the program works, which is one person instead of several, which would be nice. There's a time frame on this, the 15th, right? Yeah, Saturday. So it's, yeah. you, I'm sorry, so it's either you're up or not, either you're willing to, to at least get us, get him to the next step, or you're not. There'll be another discussion of um, costs, et cetera. But I just want you to know before you agree to go any further that that's what I see you contain. I see you is a little bit of staff time, put the thing out to bid, and um, the legal costs of the contract. Further discussion or questions or comments from the board? 
So they'll come out and they'll do the engineering, come up with a dollar figure, and then the owner of the property would have to sign off on 25% yep. by, by payments or upfront or whatever. Right. My, I would say upfront. Yeah. Yeah. Pay for. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then they also, you know, we would transfer our obligation to maintain it for 10 years right. to the owner as well. And if the owner, and this owner is willing to do those things, if you have another owner that wasn't, then they would participate. But if he refuses to pay the 25%, can we back out? Yes, because this has the only thing that this ha is going to um, bind us to is that that someone's going to go meet this gentleman and show him this property, and he'll meet there with the homeowner. But the homeowner already has, a, you know, he, he said he would. Because, you know, that's a good deal for him. He can get this work done and save the structure or whatever for, you know, 25%. That's the best deal he's going to get. <laughs> No, you, you would have to transfer it so that he <coughs> this does not obligate us to anything other than letting Michael or one of his staff members come out. Yep. Make a motion we authorize Chris. Oh, Chris is sign the uh, document. Second. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. 
to that. This is a month old. So. <coughs> they should just be working. And have they, have they started the pro? I, I think we had talked there a month or two ago about was Chet going to retire? Yeah, he's looking for is it, it, Are they in the process of hiring? Or? Well, that's, that was what's on the agenda. Is, uh, is some, of, some people want to hire a bookkeeper that can take over as manager, but I don't think the qualifications are there. Does it, does it sound like, and I know, you know, going through this whole process here over the last four years, Initially, you know, not to talk bad about Chet, but the, we filled the position with not the exact qualifications right. that the position required. Um, so this time around, are, are we looking to fulfill the requirements? Because it kind of, with that comment, it kind of sounded like maybe they're kind of looking to get a bookkeeper that then could manage the facility and that I just I saw the qualifications I saw pictures of flank. <laughs> <laughs> so, have they updated Chet's job description? Like has Chet updated it recently so that when you put it out that you have you know I mean nobody better write the job description than Chet, right? <laughs> well, the interlocal agreement pretty much dictates that. Exactly. Oh he job doesn't have so that's what his right. job description is with the interlocal. Chet's the one that wants to hire a bookkeeper to work him into a man. Right. So I mean, he's, he's not even looking at the, the job qualifications of, of what's in the philosophy. And, and again, the reason why we're in the position that we're in is when the interlocal agreement was originated, you know, it, it clearly states the, the, um, the position that is needed for it to do the job there. And that wasn't quite followed through to at that time, no. right? Um, and and I know some of the arguments from you and I, as well as some of the board members that were here that aren't here anymore, was that things wouldn't run the way they should there had we had the right qualifications to do the job. So I wonder, and it sounds like right now that maybe we're not heading in the right direction. Again, we will be unless I get way out of it. So, what's the status of the interlocal agreement? Like, there was a lot of talk about it, like a bunch yeah. for a little while, and then we're waiting on a feasibility study, right? And supposedly, we've got somebody doing it right now. Oh, is that you wait the business plan that Megan's writing? Yes, that's what you're waiting for. Yes, oh, okay. I wasn't sure because I remember there was like a lot of flurry of activity, and then I didn't remember yeah. hearing about it. I mean, there, yeah, it, it's been, what, two years? There, there's a lot of difference of opinions when it comes to that. Yeah, I remember Greg um, saying, I, I was just scared, I couldn't remember, but I, yeah, Chad had asked me about the business plan once, right. and we were talking about it. I mean, I, I think this is a great opportunity, you know, I mean, Chet's a good guy. I think it's a great opportunity to get the right qualifications for that job, and it could put everything else to bed there. Yes rather than have to go through this whole changing things around here, because things should flow correct, you know, given the right tools there. They not have to go through all this. So I just hope that that's so what? what we're looking at. But I'm um, one of six dollars. Yeah. I bet you could sway the one of the others. <laughs> are we no, no, no. <laughs> buy or dinner? <laughs> are we are, are we due to have another sit down with the Royalton board and Not that I'm aware catch of. up or Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. You can just take that top paper. Well we usually have one a year, so I'm just doing it. We must be doing it. Uh Larry's not chair anymore. To the point where we might need to have a sit down, let us know. Who's the chair? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Well, let us know if it gets to the point where we need to have a sit down. I'll pull one. I mean, I think it's a good opportunity to get the right yes. qualified individual that's in there. I, that's what I'm pushing for, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I don't know. We have one like that. 
Do we have any any other business to come before the board? Anything? Yeah, I was curious. Did you have a chance to talk to um, about the Calvary Memorial? With, uh, Oh, Mr. Ketchum? Ketchum. I have not yet. No. I won't reach out to that. That was actually on my list to do this week. But oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah about that. Yeah. That, honestly, I went by. I don't know if anybody's going to have to look at it, but there's really yeah. not anything to be done. Yeah. There's nothing to be done. It would be good if we could get back to Jack. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll, 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 I'll get a hold of Mr. Ketchum. And then that conflict of interest policy it has to be done by July 1st. Yeah, yep, I just I finished it tonight actually, but it's a conflict of interest for federal money <laughs> only. So it's there's no sense you leave yours alone and we'll, and I wrote one separate. That was her recommendation or his. So is this like an amendment to our current one or is it a whole It's gonna be policy its own standalone or? policy. What yeah. happened is because the fire department we applied for a grant and it looked like we were good. And then when they looked at the conflict of interest policy, they said it didn't adhere to the federal code of regulations, you know, right. 200 section. <laughs> you know, so, which was fine. So they sent me some information, and it their recommendation was to just you could make one just separate for better money. I thought I was going to have it done, but I didn't. I well, the the LTC has a has a model conflict of interest But it's policy. not, yes, that would, that's the hang-up, that's the problem. It okay. doesn't, it doesn't work have the for federal us. language. Oh, okay. I actually was going to write to Jill Muir and let her know to say, you know, your, theirs is great, but this, but the, for federal money, it has to um, cover all employees. So, and your model financial policy is really just public, or public of interest policy, sorry, not financial, is, is public officials. So right. this can't be that. And, in, okay. in the VLCT draft, which is one that adopted, it said you may take um, disciplinary action. Feds are like, you're not. Right. So, you know, there's some specific yeah. things. So I, I finished cool. it today, actually tonight in between waiting for the meeting, and then sent it to Jordan mm -hmm. um, at the state to review to see if that's going to meet. You know, I reviewed all the section 100. I even took some of the stuff right out of the federal regs and put it into the conflict of interest policy. So it's going to be a totally separate thing. Um, and we just had to have a draft and take an action or draft to them by June 19th. So, so, so we'll see that at the next. On the next, yeah, yeah. We'll see what um, Jordan has for tweaks and uh, if any, and then that, yeah. So, so it wasn't. I thought about amending, but I'm like, you know, then employees get a little nervous if you start, you know, putting it all together. And the BLCT is, is very good and it's specific to the board members. So. Ready? Anything else? Now, depending on uh, second, so depending, you can just tell me. Depending on depending on what comes out of the executive session, we may go back into public session to make and I can, to I make can, a motion. Okay, and, and we'll get you that information. Okay. Yeah, we've done that.